future is now. Okay. Those are the words of William Gibson, the author, the cyberpunk author, <laughs> who gave us decades ago the great cyberpunk novel, Neuromancer. How many of you have read Neuromancer? You can't be cyberpunk unless you read it. <laughs> Gibson's cyber future didn't come all at once. Gibson invented the word cyberspace, but he told us the future doesn't come all at once. The cyberspace future is not evenly distributed. He was right. For 30 years ago, Gibson's cyber future began. Cyberspace arguably began 30 years ago. But many of us, including people like me, who were in the White House at the time, thought that the era that was beginning 30 years ago, that era was something called the post-communist era. That era was something called the post-Cold War era. That's where we were focused. We were focused on the past. But then slowly, even people in the White House noticed that the world was changing. There was a new revolution. Not a communist revolution, but an IT revolution. It was as big and as profound as the Industrial Revolution 100 years before. But when the Industrial Revolution occurred, you could see it all around you. People left their villages and their farms and came into cities to work in factories. Factories that put up towers that belched smoke and clogged the air. You knew there was a revolution going on. But when the IT revolution began, when cyberspace was created, 30 years ago, it was not as obvious. As Gibson said, it was not evenly distributed. So in the White House, we saw this thing happening. We saw the great potential it had for the economy. But President Clinton also saw the dark underbelly of cyberspace, the potential that it could do harm as well as good. And so the president asked me to go out around the country and to speak to leaders of corporations, to speak to CEOs. I went to Redmond, Washington to speak with Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, and to Silicon Valley to speak with Larry Ellison, the founder of Oracle. And I thought they could tell me what the cyber future would look like. They couldn't. They didn't know what they had created. They didn't know what was going to happen. Instead, it was the CEO of a railroad company. Not of a new company just created, but of a company 125 years old. The CEO of an ancient railroad company told me what was happening. He said, we are no longer a railroad company. We are now an IT company with trains. <laughs> that is the profound understanding that CEOs around the world are slowly coming to realize. Whatever you make, Whatever you manufacture, whatever you do, you are not a car company, you are not an airplane company, you are not a steel company, you're an IT company that makes cars, cars empowered by IT. You are an aircraft manufacturer that makes airplanes that only work with IT. If that wasn't clear to CEOs before, it became very clear two years ago, in 2017, 
when the Russian military attacked Ukraine with a cyber attack, a very clever cyber attack. What they did was to hack their way into an auditing and accounting firm that every company in Ukraine used. It was called ME Doc. And they put in the software update, the monthly software update from ME Doc, a worm that would eat software. And so when that monthly update came, it was digitally signed, and it went right through the firewalls of all the companies that subscribed to ME Doc. And as soon as it was through the firewalls, it began to eat software. And within minutes, servers, routers, smartphones were bricks. They had no software on them. They were useless. They sat there blinking and doing nothing else. When that attack spread, there was collateral damage. The attack spread beyond the intended target of Ukraine. The attack spread out over virtual private networks, over corporate VPNs, around the world, throughout Europe, throughout the United States, and even back into Russia. And companies doing a huge variety of things suddenly were frozen in place. At 75 major seaports around the world, the giant cranes that lift up containers and move them from ships to trains stopped in midair at 75 ports around the world because that worm had attacked the software of the largest shipping company in the world. And for three weeks, nothing moved in those ports. No one knew what was in the containers. No one knew where the containers were supposed to go. And none of the machines worked because they had no software. In the United States, a major drug manufacturer producing cancer drugs had its production line halt. The chemicals being mixed stopped. The manufacturer of pills stopped. The conveyor belts froze because the machinery had no software. Throughout the world, over a billion dollars worth of damage was done on one day by one cyber attack. But what that attack proved to CEOs all over the world was they were not CEOs of ship companies. They were not CEOs of pharmaceutical companies. They were CEOs of IT companies that made pharmacies, that made pharmaceuticals. They were CEOs of companies that were IT companies that had ships.